Step two, torque by sequence to 22 foot pounds. The turbo motor and full time four wheel drive dual range. I'm going to replace the battery and replace the terminals with these nice brass fitting terminals here. I like these because they don't stretch. You can undo them from the uh, wing nut side if you have to pull your battery or disconnect the cable without compromising the deformation of the battery terminals themselves. All right, this is Fox again. I'm in my 94 Legacy. Um, I've been having an issue with the uh, battery. Not no, so much the battery itself, but I'm going to replace the battery. But the key, when you click the key, uh, it started as clicks instead of wanting to start. But if you rattle it enough times, it'll do that. And it's pretty common amongst automatic Subarus. Um, a lot of times it's the ignition switch itself or the plug-in or wiring in between. It's not exactly a relay here other than the uh, solenoid on the starter itself. But I'm going to show you what it's doing here. Well, it did at that time. I just tried to start it previously, which, yeah, there it goes. So if I rattle the key, this she starts. It's usually more prevalent if I have the lights or the heater fan on while attempting to start the car. But um, it does start to get annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the battery with the new one I'd put in my uh, 86 three door that I haven't been driving. And I'm gonna swap on brass terminals to replace the factory ones because those after a while stretch out and you can you know cram them all tight but they don't get a good bite on the battery post so here's my donor battery it's been roasting overnight on the slow cycle off my battery charger here needles all the way to the left so she's been charging for about 24 hours hopefully this battery's not cooked because it did go flat several times in my three door due to some parasitic draw although it's a fresh battery and has only been driven on about three times and gone dead about three times from parking. Uh, I ripped this out of my other car the other day and been floating it on this charger all day. So I'm going to throw in this Legacy and see if it's any better than the old crusty interstate battery that's in there because this morning it cranked over really slow and I'm afraid that if the temperature gets any colder I'm going to have reliability issues. Right, here's my old interstate battery. So you can see the negative terminal is getting some green crust on there. Uh, this has come up in about the last two or three months. Uh, humidity, weather, road salts and whatnot. Um, I'm going to disconnect my terminal from the little 12 millimeter nut that goes on here and leave my existing wires uh, to go to the wing nut on the brass terminal. Uh, the negative side that's crimped together. An E81 or E82 Subaru should have a nut that you can do the same thing for the negative side. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave this post on this wire because I don't have an eyelet piece to crimp onto there, but I'll eventually supersede to the other brass terminal for that. And I don't know if you can see from this perspective, if that battery looks like it's crooked in there, that's because this whole front end of the car used to be over here when I got the thing, and I've managed to beat out the entire frame and battery tray with a hammer and dollies to be able to put this car back together as you see. So we'll take this battery out of here and take a, uh, a voltage measurement if I can find my meter. Drop my other battery in and see how well she cranks over. Um, I'd have to show you how this would crank in the morning to compare to the new battery but uh, if you know what a weak battery acts like then you should know what I'm referring to. All right, here's our old battery. It's an Interstate Megatron. Uh, typical of what comes from the factory in these cars, at least the ones built here stateside. I've always seen a lot of Interstate batteries and Subarus coming in them as I've gotten them. So this battery is ready to go in the car. I'm going to attach our positive leads for the starter and the fuse panel to the brass post on the positive. And the negative I'm going to attach with the car's original post wire because it's a crimped design that doesn't have a nut. To compare specs our interstate batteries at MT35 550 cold cranking amp and 690 cranking amp doesn't say anything about duty cycles or amp hours or any of that. Uh, this is a 60 month battery also. Here I have a Super Start. This was purchased at the O'Reilly Auto Parts for about $75 after core. Um, 
It's a 72 month battery. Part number 75 slash 8672. Cold cranks at 700. At 0 degrees and 835 at 32 degrees. This one I think I just picked up off the shelf. Picked up the fattest battery I could get to fit. As you can see it's also got for side post terminals which I don't know why the hell anybody would have invented that. It's ridiculous. But um, I guess they would make good for hooking up accessories, Baja lights and whatnot. So I'm going to drop this battery in now. Alright, our new battery fits in here quite nicely. Um, sometimes you can even cram a whole entire deep cell battery in here. Um, battery safety, uh, as you may have saw in my last shot, that this wire was arcing as I touched it on its terminal because the negative post was still connected. Um, anytime you're servicing the electrical system on your car, or just servicing it in general, you want to remove the negative battery clamp. You would naturally think to remove the positive clamp, but the thing is, if the ground is still connected, any positive leads that touch on the positive terminal could cause an arc because you have a path to ground. So what you do is you disconnect the negative, eliminate a path to ground, and then that way there's no voltage that can get around anywhere uh, from the battery in the car if you only removing one terminal. Now to connect this back up, opposite is true. We want to hook up our positive wire first, then our negative, as to not uh, create an arc if we were to do it the other way around, which could potentially be a fire hazard or an explosion hazard when dealing with batteries. Um, not so much a problem with non-maintenance type, but anything with a cell cap, they do produce hydrogen gas. I've had a battery explode in my face from popping cell caps off and my screwdriver I was using grounded out and caused the hydrogen to blow the cap out in my face. So once again, remove the negative cable anytime you're servicing the electrical system and um, install in the positive first when putting it all back together. Uh, same is true for ju uh, jump starting. So it's, it's negative. We go, you go positive to positive, then negative to negative. Off the subject here, but uh, let's get this one tied down. All right, I got my new battery in here. A uh, nice crispy brass terminal. Let's see how nice and crispy our car wants to start. Definitely sounds a lot more solid with the um, the crunch of the starter. I'm going to put on my lights and my heater fan. I'm going to run the, let's run the AC, why not? So, look how uh, bright our lights are over here. Nice bright light up ahead. High beam, low beam, heater fan. You know, this is uh, quite a bit of amps. If you have a weak battery and you left, turned your key on this long before attempting to start it, that's going to be the give or take difference of whether your car fires up or not and has enough juice to, for the second attempt. So yeah, that sounds nice and healthy. I really like that. What I don't like is this car doesn't have a voltmeter in it like the old GL Subarus do. But uh, I have peace of mind knowing I have a strong battery. So that battery charged up pretty good. Um, I suppose I'll leave this sit overnight. See how she cranks again in the morning. There we have it.